there are seven things negatively and four things positively. This can only be true if he's a person. Good study. I would, I would recommend putting this in the back of the front of your Bible. Referring to that also. Got all those things? All right. That was B. Now, we didn't read Matthew 12, 31, did we? Let me read Matthew 12, 31. He possesses the characteristics and personality. He has capacity to be grieved, vexed, blasphemed, resisted, etc. Matthew 12, 31. And Acts chapter 7, verse 51 is this one. Somebody read that. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. And then C, he performs acts, A, F, uh, A, C, T, S, he performs acts which can be predicated only of a person. He reveals, he testifies, he convinces, he helps, he guides, he knows, he makes intercession, he speaks, he gives life, etc. 1 Corinthians 2.10, who has that? Amen. John 16.8. Many is some who will receive the word of sin and of righteousness and of righteousness. Romans 8, 16 and 26. Likewise, the spirit also helps us. We are in jeopardy, for we know not what we should pray for as well. But the Spirit itself made an intercession for us to draw me to the other. What about that? Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. Galatians 5, verse 18. But if we be led of the Spirit, we are not under the law. That? That's uh, Galatians 5 18.
D. His name is associated with other names in such ways as to imply clearly personality. The Father and the Son are persons. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are mentioned together as in Matthew 28, 19. Can we get that? And 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Well, you have Father who is a person, Son who is a person, the Holy Spirit must also be a person, all right? Second Corinthians chapter number 13, verse 14. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen. Sorry. We'll let you get the next one. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit must therefore be a person. All right? E. We'll let our sister read John 14, 16. Amen. He, clear, he is clearly distinguished from the Father and the Son. Christ stated that he would pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. John 14, 16. Amen, amen. All right, so we have... that there is but one or the fact that the Godhead is triune is clearly evident. I, forget my, I didn't get my grammar right. Old Testament <laughs> In other words, you don't say it directly, you just kind of suggest. Yes. Indirectly. <laughs> Why Brother Randy look at me so strange? <laughs> the Old Testament contains intimations of the triune Godhead. Number one, God is called the Father. Doubtless thou art our Father and so forth. Then instead of me read it for Then Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 4. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth? 
you see the Father. Now, number two, God has a Son with divine prerogatives. And remember also that this is very important because in Islam, Allah has no Son. So if you ever hear people say that the God of Islam is the same as Jehovah God, you know instantly that that is error, that is false doctrine, that is blasphemy against the true and living God. Allah is a false God. No. It's an idol of, the, of wicked minds. All right, so God has a son, amen, with yes. divine prerogatives. Psalm 2, verses 7 and 12. All right, so, so it's declared in the Old Testament that the God of the Bible has a son. Amen. 